In this video, we're going to take a look at volume by slicing. So I've got, let's say we have this function here, f of x equals x plus 2. Um, and let's say we were going to find um, the area under this curve from 0 to 6. Well, we know that we would do a bunch of rectangles. A bunch of rectangles under here, and we could find the area by integrating. But let's say this time that um, we're going to make a 3D image out of this. And let's say that what we're going to do is we're going to make some squares out of this. So there's there's going to be a square coming off, off this bottom here. So this would be like the base of the square and the height of the square would, would be the same because it's a square. Um, and this would produce a 3D drawing. It's kind of hard to do here on the on the little um, on the screen here. So I've got an app. I'm going to. Show. So here we have um, showing us the upper function y equals x plus two. This purple line, and our lower function is the x-axis y equals zero. And you can see we're going from zero to six. We're going to find the volume from zero to six, and um, these are squares that we're building off here. So this little picture down here is a little easier to see what's going on here so um because it's a three-dimensional picture so here's your y-axis here's your x-axis and you can see we have a square here and as i increase x on here you can see that the squares are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as we approach six because the gap along here is getting getting uh taller i guess you'd say or in this case wider for this three-dimensional um shape that we're going to have here so so these are all the squares that we're going to add up. We're going to add up a whole pile of squares here. And um, if I click this on and I build it like here, you can kind of see what the three-dimensional shape is. So we're going to try to find the volume of this, of this three-dimensional shape. And we realize when we look back here at our picture, this is actually just the bottom piece of a square that's coming straight out of the page it's just you would it's kind of hard to draw it unless you see like a 3d picture like this okay so that's what we want to do we want to add up some squares now so what we're going to do is we're going to add up from zero to six not some rectangles um adding up rectangles would just give us a sort of a two-dimensional thing but now we're going to we want to add up some squares on this particular one. So let S be a solid that lies between A and B. In our point, this is zero, 0 to 4. If the cross-sectional area of S that is perpendicular to the x-axis is A of x, then we can find the volume of that solid by simply integrating the area of that, that shape. So in our case, the area would be squares. So how do we find the area of a square? Well, that's length times width, or you could say the base squared, length times width, base squared. So how do we find the base of this thing? Well, that's just x plus 2 squared, because this distance here, this y value of x plus 2, is the base of this square, and all we got to do is square it to get the area of the square. So this would be this would be what all we would do here, and then we could square this. We could multiply that out, so that's x squared plus 4x plus 4 from 0 to 6. And so integrating this gives x cubed over 3 plus 2x squared plus 4x, and we're doing this from 0 to 6, which means we are just going to put 6 into here. So 6 cubed over 3 plus 2 times 6 squared is 36 plus 4 times 6 would be, the volume of this would be 168 units cubed, um, whatever that would be, whatever units we had here. So that's that's all we're... All we're doing here is now instead of adding up rectangles, we're adding up other shapes like, like squares. Let's look at this example. 
Region R is the base, is a region enclosed by the function y equals root x above. It's kind of nice. They showed us what the above top function was, and here's the bottom function, and we've got an interval from 0 to 4. So now they're saying that the region R, this is the base of a solid, and this one, again, cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. So we're going to integrate everything from 0 to 4, and we're going to add up some squares. So integrals always means like adding up some stuff. If we just want to find the area under a curve, we're adding up some rectangles. But here now we're adding up some squares. And we got to find the volume of this solid. So of course, the area of a square is just the base squared. And this is a little bit different because the um, we have a top function and a bottom function. So, so just to give you a picture here again, we got our square root graph up top. We got our negative one half x line on the bottom, and we are building some squares off this. And so you can see the square would get zero. We're only going to go to four. Um, so we're adding up some shapes, shape that's going to look something like this. So we need to find the base area, which is the top function, root x, minus the bottom function. So that distance, we had the graph that looked like this, square root of x and negative 1 half. This distance here is the base of our solid. And so that would be the y value of this up here take away the y value of this function down here. So that's why we went root x minus negative one half, whoops, negative one half x in the denominator. And then we got to square that because the area of a square is the base squared. All right, now we just got to integrate this. Well, before I integrate this, I'm going to square this out. So over here, I got root x minus minus, so that's like plus a half x. And I got to square this. Okay, so root x times root x would be x. Root x times a half x would be a half. Now this is x to the one half. Root x is x to the one half times x to the one, which would be, we'd add those exponents. So we get one and a half or three over two. And then continuing on here, one half x to the three over two plus one quarter x squared. So we would end up with x plus one half and one half is one. So that's x to the three over two plus one quarter x squared. So here is what we are integrating. All right, so integrating this would become x squared over two adding one to this exponent would become five over two, and then we'd have to divide it by five over two or multiply by two fifths. And here we're going to add one to the exponent and divide by the exponent. <clears throat> so there's our, there's our integral, and we're going from zero to four, and we are gonna need a calculator to do this. We're gonna put four in here, so four squared, 16, 16 divided by two is eight, plus two-fifths times x, which is four to the power of five over two, plus four to the power of three over 12 gives us 392 fifteenths for an area there. So that would be the volume of that solid, 392 fifteenths, um, in this case, cubic units of some sort. And we'll look at one last example here. Same question, but this time our cross sections perpendicular to the base are going to be semicircles. 
So now we're adding up from zero to four some semicircles. Okay, so we need to find the formula for a semicircle. Well, the area of a circle would be pi r squared, so the semicircle is going to be half of that. So that would be the integral from 0 to 4 of pi r squared. Okay, let's go back to our um, situation here. This time, instead of a square, this actually doesn't have semicircles. Uh, it has circles. So we'll just have to ignore this part on the bottom here, but the top part, you can see kind of what's going on there. Um, and um, we're going from zero to four. I still have the six up here, but that's okay. You get the idea. Um, so we have these little semicircles that are getting bigger and bigger and bigger as we approach four. And we want to add that all up as if our shape looked like like this. And again, pretend they're just semicircles. We don't have this part on the bottom. So it's kind of going to be this little bit of a tunnel type thing, but it'll be a solid. So we need to find the, the radius of this. We need to find the radius of this. So the radius is going to be half of the distance between those two. So half of the distance from our top function to our bottom function. So the radius is going to be our top function, which was root x, minus our bottom function, which was negative a half x. But then we're going to have to divide that by 2, because otherwise that would have been our diameter. So r is going to be root x plus a half x, all divided by 2. Okay, so integrating from 0 to 4, pi over 2, and our radius is root x plus a half x, all divided by 2, and all squared. So here's, here's our expression. We're adding up a bunch of semicircles, and we're going to tidy this up a little bit before we do this. So I've got to square this 2 in the denominator, which is a 4. And I'm going to bring that out. So that becomes 4 times 2, which is an 8. And then I just have this. Oops, keep forgetting that x. <clears throat> uh, we just have this. And um, we actually did that up here already. Root x plus a half x squared. So that was x, x squared over 2 plus 2 fifths. x to the 5 over 2, um, and then x cubed over 12. Oops, that was me actually already integrating, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, sorry, that was already integrated. Okay, we will just dump this integral sign because we've already done the integration. This is a constant, so I don't have to worry about that from 0 to 4. And then this here, we already did this area, that was 392 fifteenths. So the only difference with our semicircles is that we're going to multiply by pi over 8. So we'll get the calculator up here and go, it's already still in there, that's kind of handy, times pi over 8 will give us 49 fifteenths pi. So that's pretty cool. We can now find volumes of things simply by adding up. Integral is like adding up whatever shape we want. It can be semicircles, it can be rect rectangles, it can be squares, it can be triangles, anything we have a geometric formula for, we should be able to add all those little shapes up using, uh, using integration.